The biggest difference between the stage and film versions of this story is the fate of Harold Goff. In the stage production, the character was played by Suave Franchotone, one of the group theater's charter members who'd returned from Hollywood to star in the 1939 Broadway show. He was so despicable, one reviewer quoted a woman in the audience loudly asking, when are you going to kill this rat? She got her wish. On stage, the fishing buddies murder Goff, dump the body overboard, and suffer no recriminations. The politics of the piece were abundantly clear to an audience in 1939 who were witnessing the rise of fascists in Germany, Italy, Spain, and Japan. If you don't fight fire with fire, there will be no end to the oppression. They wouldn't learn about Russia's fascists for a few more years. In Hollywood, however, none of that passed muster. The production code office demanded the murder be turned into an accident so the lovable fishermen could return from their fateful voyage with clear consciences. The moral ambiguity and guilty consciences that would become essential to film noir were still literally another world war away. By the end of 1945, everyone knew how bad it could really get, and the noir films that resulted helped Hollywood grow up a little bit. Perhaps just as disturbing to the artists who made Out of the Fog was another change the production code mandated, having to do with the ethnicity of the characters. On stage, the friends, played by Thomas Mitchell and John Quaylen, were Jewish and Greek, not uncommon in the Brooklyn neighborhood where playwright Irwin Shaw grew up. But for the movie, they were changed to an Irishman and a Norwegian and cast accordingly. This, even though producer Hal Wallace, director Anatole Litvak, writers Robert Rossin and Jerry Wald, and star John Garfield, were all Jewish. It reminds me of a story Garfield told about having to change his name when he signed his contract with the Warner Brothers, who, need I add, were also Jewish. A studio executive suggested it would be a simple matter of changing his actual name, Julius Garfinkel, to the less ethnic-sounding James Garfield. Well, the actor objected, saying, James Garfield? Are you kidding? He was president of the United States. You wouldn't name an actor Abraham Lincoln, would you? Never, he was told. Abraham sounds way too Jewish. Thus, John Garfield was created. Out of the Fog was a box office disappointment for Warner Brothers. It's probably an oversimplification, but one not without truth, that the public liked Ida Lupino better when she was tougher on screen, and they loved John Garfield when he was tough but still vulnerable. He'd never again play a villain after this, but he would become a fixture in the more nuanced, morally complicated world of film noir, making classics like The Postman Always Rings Twice, Body and Soul, Force of Evil, The Breaking Point, and He Ran All the Way, among many others. If you are so inclined, let me know what you thought of Out of the Fog on the Noir Alley Facebook page or Twitter feed. I'm just glad they didn't go with the title they first tried to put on this picture, Danger Harbor, which is so bad, no movie has ever been called that. Next week's picture, however, has a great title, Two O'Clock Courage. It's an early B film by Anthony Mann, maybe the most represented director in the six-year history of Noir Alley. Ann Rutherford plays a taxi driver who helps Tom Conway regain his memory. The poor sap can't even remember that he's George Sanders' brother. Until then, see you in the shadows.